uh, I wasn't sure initially where it was going to be placed. And so it's like the introduction uh, to what it is that I'm going to be sharing with you today. So in the interview, I reference how I got to assemble the Tara approach, how my own life story led me to that. And I refer to original brilliance. Uh, and I also refer to physiological, neurological resilience. And by the time I had told the story of how I got there, there was no time left to actually share the practices. So I am really thrilled to have this opportunity to dive more deeply into the practices. We are going to record the first part of this gathering, uh, which will start shortly. And the second part, roughly divided in half for the hour, is me responding to your questions. After you hear about what this system has to offer, what these practices can provide for you, uh, you may have some specific questions and we'll attempt to answer a few of those uh, in the time that we have. And uh, I, I want you to know that the Tara approach is literally an approach. Uh, it's not a methodology per se. Uh, it is an orientation primarily towards these two factors of original brilliance and resilience, physiological and neurological resil resilience. So what I have to offer in the TARA approach is the medicine bag that I've assembled, but that medicine bag is, is highly expansive. Uh, so uh, we're going to begin now, and if you can start the recording, yes, you already have. Thank you, Ash. Um, so you can, you can watch my interview to see how I landed uh, with the TARA approach. And the TARA approach consists basically of my research as a neuroscientist, including my research into my own nervous system and the nervous system of people like me. Oh, look at that cozy little group over there. That's wonderful. Um, people who have experienced really significant trauma to the level of shock, and I define those distinctions uh, in my book on shock. Uh, we are all in shock is the title of the book, and it's about to be reissued this year in September, actually. It's updated for these times. So I actually am beginning to suspect that people like me, whose nervous systems have been completely shattered, and how we have found our way home is going to be leadership. It's going to contribute to the kind of unprecedented leadership that's needed in these times. So that fusion that I developed, and I, I do this because it's part of the system. <laughs> it's also part of me. I move a lot when I, when I uh, share, uh, which makes me very happy. Um, so the neuroscience component, which came largely out of my clinical research with traumatic brain injury, and then my studies with Mary Eno Burmeister, uh, a woman who taught me the energy system that I will be sharing with you. That's gonna be the focus of what we do here today because of my awareness of the need for integration that I have been hearing about in the various groups that I've been participating in. And integration uh, is an expansive experience. We can integrate and absorb and process more rapidly, much more than we're programmed to think is possible. But I believe that the new story, uh, the, the world that we are creating is built on the unique resilience that each one of us has. One of the things I wanna say before I share what Mary taught me is that Mary Eno, uh, a Japanese woman who reclaimed this system from Japan, made it very clear that this is a universal system. It's not a system that is reliant on a particular cultural experience. Those of you who are not speaking, if you could mute, that would be great. So as I share what Mary transmitted to me, which within the Tara approach is called Jin Shin Tara. So Jin Shin, uh, the art that Mary taught me, and I studied with her for 
well over 20 years, uh, she's now an ancestor, uh, is that that is the translation of the art of compassion. When I add Tara onto that, it becomes the art of compassion, in my understanding, through the merciful feminine. So I'm going to begin with what I call a somatic attunement, which is an experience of Jin Shin Tara, and it in itself is integrative. So the teachings I absorbed from Mary, uh, and they were voluminous because I followed her around all over the world uh, and took so many notes that I have been transcribing now for over 30 years. Those teachings allow us to reclaim the energetic embryology that we actually remember. So as we're treating ourselves, we're reconnecting with the formative energetic constructs that shaped us. And that is why these simple, very simple practices are a pathway to original brilliance. So simply by doing the practices through your touch and the relationship between connective tissue on these sites, I call them sacred sites, and you'll all be receiving maps, so you will get the resources you need to continue these practices. The contact between the connective tissue in your fingertips, and sometimes your toes, that happens sometimes, uh, the palms of your hands, your fingertips, turns on these sites. And as a neuroscientist, I have tracked the neurological feedback that occurs when that happens. And I've done that in various circumstances. If you want the clinical trials that I've done, we can send those to you. But just in summary, let me say that I've done that with traumatic brain injury, autism, uh, stroke, and aphasia. So that tracking has convinced me uh, of the validity of this system. These energy systems are called, I call them, the rivers of splendor. Uh, they're also called the extraordinary meridians. And they're actually very simple to turn on. So I'm going to lead you through some basic exercises uh, that will help turn on these pathways in your body. I'm, I'm very excited to share this with you. I think if you can maintain these simple practices, even as you sort through, coming to the end of this summit, all that you've taken in, that you will experience an organic unfolding of integration and resilience. So I'm going to start with the three major pathways that are the basis of the rivers of splendor. So one is called the main central vertical flow. So let's turn on the main central vertical flow, which is your midline. So structurally, your midline, your spinal column, was also your first experience of the connection between your mind and your body. So we're gonna be multifaceted here in this wonderful technology. So whether you're seated or standing, just bring your awareness first into your feet and allow your feet to hug the earth standing on. So make a connection from the connective tissue on the soles of your feet into the flesh of the mother. And I'm going to orient you as you hug the mother. I'm going to orient you to the base of your big toe, right at the place where the, the digit becomes about to transition into the foot, that little valley there. Just put your awareness there. 
You may close your eyes, whatever is the most comfortable for you. Soften your joints, soften your face, drop your shoulders, widen across the clavicles. And I'm gonna invite you now to bring the palm of your right hand to the crown of your head. And just let it rest there, no pressure, no activity, just resting there. And the palm of your left hand to the base of your cranium. So you're cradling your occiput gently and resting the palm of your hand on the crown and you have a connection here to the base of your big toes. Let's receive the breath of life. Three wonderful inhalations with exhalations twice as long. And tap in very gently with your sensory awareness into what has shifted, what your palms and your big toes have received. Stay connected to your sensation. And if you like, I like to do this, pretend you're a dancer as we switch from one position to another. Do it with some grace and beauty. So bring, when you're ready, the right hand and do it artfully. Have fun with this transition. Bring the palm of the right hand to the Place right under the ribs, this level of the body. The sternum is here, just to the right of the sternum. And then you're gonna bring the palm of your left hand with that same dancerly aplomb to this valley that rests in your elbow. So you're holding on the right side, the base of the ribs, the lower ribs, and on the left side, you are holding this little valley. And here you're using your fingertips. You could use your palm as well, whatever's comfortable. There's no way to do this wrong. And again, three beautiful breaths with the exhalation twice as long as the inhalation. Staying very present to your sensation, letting thoughts drift down the river of sensation, knowing you can retrieve them whenever you would like. And leaving the hand that is at the base of the ribs, the lower ribs, you're going to take the hand that's in the elbow and bring it to that same side, the right side, upper ribs. And here you're free to use fingertips 
And if you're using your fingertips, I'm going to suggest that you find this interstitial area between the ribs. So between the third and fourth rib in that cartilaginous tissue there, that spongy tissue, tissue. It's kind of like interspinal tissue. You could rest your fingertips, any fingertips. And another option, equally potent, the palm of the hand can rest in that area. So now you're holding both the lower and the upper ribs on opposite sides. Three gorgeous breaths, the breath of life. Notice what's happening. Feel the shifts, energetic, physiological, imagistic. And if you like, you're welcome to switch to the other side, holding the opposite lower and upper ribs on the opposite side. And allowing this to cycle through according to your own rhythms, we're going to seal the recalibration of our nervous systems, which has just occurred, with what is called an inju. Inju will look familiar to you if you know the word mudra, hand postures. And this inju is going to be very familiar to you. You are slightly pressing the pads of all the fingers, including the thumbs, and the palms of the hands. They're in direct contact. There's not pressure, but there's presence. And you can bring this inju to the heart, to the throat to the third eye, or to any area of your body that needs integration. So perhaps some part of your body is still calling for help. You can place the inju just outside that area. I'm gonna bring it to the level of my lungs. And staying with that hugging of the body of the mother, and the awareness at the base of the big toes. Again, receive this energy medicine. Three breaths. And whenever you're ready, again, let yourself be a dancer if that feels good to you. It always feels good to me. Dance whenever I can. Or you can stay for as long as you like with this in you. I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about the Tara approach and this particular system. So what you've just done really is awaken the template of your original brilliance, which is in this incredible integration of the main central vertical flow and what are called the supervisory and diagonal mediator flows that weave uh, the energy systems of the body 
uh, up the back and down the front. You did that by turning on that place at the base of the big toe. Down the front of the midline. And then the systems that energize the functions, holistic functions of the right and left sides of the body. And then the systems that weave that right and left functionality together. And as we turn on these energetic embryology structures that, by the way, have actually been microscopically detected, they exist, these are not esoteric concepts. I mean, they are to a certain extent, but they are based in substance. These channels have been microscopically detected. They're called Bunghan channels. I, I can send you that research if you'd like to see it. But as we turn on these original pathways that are available to support us, we begin to recalibrate and restore to original integrity our nervous system communications with all the parts of our body. We're mainly reformatting the messaging system of the spinal column directly into the basal ganglia. So that uh, basic brain that has all of this historical information about threat is being reformatted. And to add to that, what I've done as a neuroscientist who studied in particular neurodevelopment, so the embryological development of the brain, was come to the realization that our earliest experiences of shock are the ones that set down the calibration of these pathways. So that before that happened, these constructs immediately upon conception are still available to us. And as our bodies, to use my teacher Mary's word, become denser, our capacity to remember that earlier original brilliance, that purposefulness, gets obfuscated. So reclaiming that is a physiological and sensory experience that of course is heightened enormously through consciousness. And I spoke in the uh, interview uh, about my conception and I wanted to read you a poem uh, that demonstrates the outcome of that recalibration for me personally. So I, I describe uh, in explaining uh, that my life really, I was born into conflict. So inner congruence, outer peace. That's the title of this presentation. So the inner congruence is the reclamation of original brilliance that leads to this enhanced resilience that makes it possible to engage with conflict. We're not erasing conflict, but it makes it possible to engage with conflict with the renewed witness self. So you're still operating from the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems, but the weaving right and left sympathetic, parasympathetic, which is unique to you. So the purpose of the TAR approach is to not make you look or be like something in particular. It's to allow the original brilliance to come forth. And this is also what we're supporting through the inner climate uh, curricula that we're developing in climate change and consciousness, which we'll give you access to as well, is as the inner climate becomes congruent with the original brilliance, 
than our activism at this juncture when all of us are needed is in integrity to our original brilliance. The poem is called Conception. You'll understand. My mother was lost that night in an unfamiliar darkness. Adrift, she was cut loose from her moorings. And my father, too, had never conceived of me. Yet, I reached for them. Yet, I reached for them, slipping in through the cracks in their consciousness. I slipped in <laughs> through the cracks in their consciousness. I glided in. I glided in <laughs> despite their ignorance of me. In the time of their turmoil, in the time of their turmoil, I brought peace. I brought peace. My specter of love came into their world at war. I was a moment of light permeating their fluids with God's intimacy. I came to ignite the power of being. And thus, I stepped onto my path. I cleared the way for a ceaseless pro progression, a parade of the myriad forms of love. My clear destiny, my clear destiny momentarily parted the seas of their confusion so that I, determined and direct, could move on. So if you listen to my interview, you hear me talk about a rape conception. That's the repatterning of the rape conception that happened organically. My poems can only happen organically as a result of the way in which the witness in me from a sensory perspective came alive and married the neuroscientist. So that explains, I hope, the Tara approach. I'm at the halfway point, Ash. <laughs> We're exactly halfway uh, into inner congruence, outer peace. And what I want to do now in your service is answer your questions. So this is a system of sites on the body, of an understanding of pre and perinatal development, development in utero birth experience, and of course, everything that comes afterwards, all the uh, attachment theory, et cetera, and the development of the sympathetic and parasympathetic arms of the nervous system and how they work together and how they respond to threat, all of which is incredibly up for everybody at the moment. What I found is a liberation and expansiveness that has taken me into surprising unknowns, unpredictable manifestations of who I am. And I wanna offer that to you. The system is simple. Even if you just do the practices that we're gonna provide for you, uh, that will carry you to a whole other level of experience. But I can give you more detail that is specific to you. I am sure that as I answer questions, as many as we can get to, that I'll be answering multiple questions uh, simultaneously. So Ash uh, is going to collect 
the order. Uh, so you can raise your hand uh, by doing that literally, and Ash will take note of it, 